This video is about splicing rope together. In this case, what you're seeing here is a short splice. Short splice uh, used to join two ropes together. It could be two different pieces of rope if you want to add two 50-foot sections together for a 100-foot section, if you find yourself in need. But as often as not, a short splice is used to repair a bad spot in a rope. So if you've got a rope that's got some abrasion or a nick in it, and you want to put it back together, you just cut out the bad section and join the two ends together like this. It's good for a full load. It can go through a pulley, which is different than if you had a big bulky knot in there. And it's, it's strong. The more you pull on, on it, the tighter it binds down on itself, so it's, it's got full strength. That's the short splice. A couple of other splices. This one is an eye splice. It's just simply a loop on the end, a permanent loop, until your buddy comes along with a knife and it's no longer permanent. But it is simply a permanent loop on the end of a rope. If you find the need for one of these, this uh, video will show you how to do that. The other, on the other end of my yellow rope, I've got an eye splice around an object. So here I've got an anchor, got an eye splice onto the eye of the anchor. And it's the same eye splice as we just showed with the orange rope, except that this one is around an object. Often you might want to use this uh, at the front of your boat, where the uh, little metal eye comes off the front of your boat. If you want to attach a line on there and make it look nice and have it permanent, you can put an eye splice. To make a short splice, I'm going to start by cutting out the bad portion of my rope or if I just want to join two ropes together to make a longer rope I can do that as well just going to start with a clean cut on either end making sure they're the same diameter ideally the same rope same manufacture same quality I'm going to split the three strands apart down about six or eight inches on each of these two ends that I have. And then I'm going to marry the two together in a way that one strand from the left is caught between two strands from the right and vice versa. So I'm alternating from the right, from the left, from the right, from the left. Get them in good and snug, and then just kind of hold that tight. So, the piece that's going to be on top on my left hand side is where I'm going to work right now. And what I'm going to do is the piece that's on top is going to come over a strand and then go under a strand. So, to make that happen, I'm going to force a bit of slack in here, and then I'm going to tuck that strand from the right through. Now I'm going to turn the rope away from me at the top and as I do so there's the next one that comes in line here ready to go. I'm going to pass it over the strand that this one just went under and then under the next strand coming from the left after that. So once again I'm going to twist the whole bunch away from me at the top again and then the next strand coming in line, going to pass over the one that this one just went under, and then it's going to go underneath the next strand in line. So now I've tucked each of these strands under once. I'm going to continue until I've done each of them three times. So I'm going to continue rolling away from me at the top. This one comes back to me again. I'm going to tuck it over the next strand available and then under the one after that. Force it through, roll, next one comes in line, pass over the one that this one just went under, force a gap and tuck it under the next one. Roll, same thing again. Pass it over this strand, under this strand, and then roll again after a while you have to start being careful that you're keeping 
your strands separate. It's easy for me here because I've got a yellow rope and an orange rope, but if it was all yellow or all the same color, you start mixing up which strand is which. So you want to make sure that when you're working with a strand from the right, it passes over and under a strand that's coming from the left. Don't let these ones get in the way and complicate the matter. So this one over and then under. Roll away at the top, over and under. Roll away at the top, over and then under. That should be my three tucks of each of three strands. And it looks a little sloppy now, but once it tightens up, it'll, it'll all bind down good and strong. So, what I want to do now is I want to do the same thing with the strands on the other side. I don't like working on the right and away from me, so I'm just going to spin it around. You just need lots of slack in your rope. And now, just going to do the exact same thing with these ropes that are, once again, these are the ones coming from the right. I'm going to tuck them over and under the ones coming from the left. So force a little bit of slack in there. Get this strand underneath. Roll away from me at the top. This one is going to go over the one that this one just went under and under the next one following. Roll away at the top, same thing, over and under. So continue on, rolling away at the top always, keeping track of which strands are coming from which direction. I want to roll, I want to pass over one that comes from the left and under one that comes from the left, not any of the ones that I'm tucking from the right. And again, roll at the top, over and under. These are starting to come apart on me, but if I force them through, the end result will be as strong as I need it to be. Roll away at the top, over and under. Once again, force that twist apart to get some slack. Get it underneath there. And then just carry on until you've done three tucks with each of the three strands. If you're working with rope where these strands start unraveling from you right from the get-go, you can tuck them together with a little bit of tape at the top just to make them stay long enough to make it happen. But ultimately, there is our short splice, perfectly strong. It is uh, a lot more, and it's got a better profile than just tying two ropes together with knots if you want to put it through a pulley or work it any way like that. And it's got full strength. The harder you pull, you can lift weight, you can pull loads. The more you pull on each end, the harder it binds down on itself. So that is the short splice. To do the eye splice on the end of the rope with no object, we're going to start by unraveling the three twists of our rope, about six inches. And then we're just going to marry that back up against the rope, determining how big an eye we want. We could place it wherever we needed to. Once that's in place, start by taking the strand on top and passing it under a strand coming from the other direction. From there, going to turn away from me at the top 
and here this next strand is all ready. There's a strand here it's going to go over, the next strand it's going to go under. Force it through. And snug it up a little bit. This next strand is going to go under this strand. It's theoretically going to go over the one that this one just went under. But because of the way we've wrapped it around the rope, it comes off a little bit differently. This is the strand it goes under. And then turn away at the top. So, our next strand in line is ready to go over one strand under another. Turn away at the top next strand ready to go over one strand under another again turn away at the top this strand ready to go over this strand and make sure you don't tuck it under the strand that's coming from the same direction it's got to be one coming from the other direction this will be it right here Right, turn away at the top and here's this strand once again I want to be careful I'm not dealing with the strands coming from the same direction it's going to go over this strand under this one turn away this strand over this strand under this one And turn away and one more time once again there's a strand coming from the same direction don't want it to complicate things so this goes over this strand under this one and then there is my eye splice good and strong to do an eye splice around the eye of an object such as an anchor or your boat. Once again we're going to start with a nice clean cut end. We're going to pass it through the object that we want to bind it onto and once again we can decide just how big of a loop we need here. Going to unravel this maybe six maybe eight inches And then I'm just going to take this and marry it back up against the other portion of the rope that we want to bind it to to make our loop. And then we start by taking the strand on top, separating a strand for it to go underneath, and then forcing that through. Turn away from myself at the top this strand is going to go over the strand that this one just went under and then under the next strand. Turn away at the top again. This one's a little difficult, a little tricky because it's not really in line since we've wrapped this rope around the other rope. But theoretically it's going to go over the strand that this one just went under so the next one in line is the one that we're going to tuck it under. And once again, turn away from yourself at the top. This gets kind of tricky and awkward, especially if you're working on a fixed object like a boat. But maybe you just have to twist yourself to make it happen. So now I've got this strand ready to go over the next strand and under the one after it. Force it through. Roll again away at the top. Make sure you can keep track of which strands are coming from this direction, which are coming from this. This is going to go over a strand coming from this direction and under a strand coming from my left. So there we go. Force it around again, twist it at the top. Now this one lines up, ready to go over this strand, under the one after that. So that's two tucks for each of my three strands. 
I'm going to keep going. Here's my next strand. It's going to go over this and come under this piece. And once again, force it at the top. This strand ready to go over that one and under that one. Once again, keeping separate which strands are coming from which direction. So that's three for that one. And we force it around. And this third strand over this piece, under that piece. And there, we've got our eye splice onto the eye of an anchor, onto the eye of a boat, onto any object you want. Full strength, the harder you pull on it, the more it binds down on itself, and the, uh, the stronger it is.